Yeah. So first up, I want to let you, as usual, okay? Yeah. Now du is dx. You put this in a box, replace n. Okay, if you replace n, we say substitute. Now we get x back. Dx is du, and this is radically. We said this is a tricky scenario because you still have x in the integral. It should be all in you now. So you go back. You go back and you find how much is x. So x would be in this case u minus five. Okay? Yeah. If you replace it back, you get all in u, but still you cannot integrate because it's not direct. Uh, you should do some little simplification here. So you simplify. Simplify means you break your fraction. So you have u over five over, u over five over. So if you can jump in steps, it's okay, but now I'm explaining. You can do it faster, uh, so no trouble. The u's should be simplified more. So you have u over u power half, you have here u power half as well. Okay, you wanna simplify more. How many u's do you get in this? This is a power one, a power half you subtract. So you get u power half back. I'm not integrating yet, I am simplifying. This you kick up. Minus. Okay. Now you can integrate, yeah. and that's it. So when you integrate, and you replace u back. So when you integrate, you add a one, so you get three over two. Divide, you get two thirds to the one. And this is when you add a one, you get half. Divide, you get two over one, and there's a five. Okay. So the final answer back to x. So you you replace how much was u x plus five. Simply just replace it in. Now five times two here is a ten, and that's it. Okay. That's okay. a constant. If you have definite, uh, like numbers are given as boundaries, you go replacing. If you don't have this is your answer. Perfect. Okay. If I have what? If you have a definite, like if you have numbers here, let's say zero to one, you go on uh, replacing. Okay. You continue, but we don't have definite numbers. So they always given two functions. If not given two functions, they would say find the area bounded between this and x axis. If there's no uh, two functions given. But so far, uh, now that are the boundaries mm, of integration that you wanna go over. So the area between this and minus two and two, this is specified. Now this is not an easy scenario. When, when this is specified, it's not an easy. Now always you do step one, step one, you should find the interse uh, intersection between f and g. So f equal g first. You put those equal, you solve for x. This is always you do step one. Solve for x, what do you get? You get, if you collect all on one side, you do quadratic rule, I would do factoring. So if I take two as a common, you do whatever method, but this would lead to two answers. What are these numbers? We have here a 2 and a 1 minus or plus and a minus. Okay? Now you get x equal minus 2 and you get x equal 1. So you have two answers. Those are the okay. intersection. Now, uh, usually graphing is not required. Okay? Like a sketch is not required, but it is, it is good if you... Uh, the teachers like who are able to little sketch, like what's going on uh, as it demonstrates. Okay, even for explanation, I wanna have a little sketch. So the F is a parabola. This is the look of the F. Okay, this is the look of the F. Okay, the look of the G is a straight line. Now, it's not any straight line, it's very special. So I'm, I'm going to graph it. So if X zero, Y four, so it passes here. And Y zero, get X equals two. So it passes there. Okay, now the intersection is a one. You see, this is the one. Anyhow, so the blue is the line G. How do I know it's a line? Because X power one. How do I know parabola? It's X power two. Okay. So, if so I it's know... two. It's two on the Y axis and one on the X. Uh, what do you mean? X like is it's... numbers. You mean? No, it's intersecting. Like G is intersecting Y at two. This is uh, for X zero Y four. 
no okay. x0 y4 now that is not this is only for for you to understand what's going on okay yeah. okay but the idea is this they are asking to find the area bounded by in between minus two two okay now when you do the intersection you got minus two to one so this is x minus two this is x minus two so if you ask where's minus two x minus two this is x minus two this is x one we're talking about x equal one and uh, this is x equal minus two so that point up is the intersection yes and this uh, point right here is the intersection again yes so usually usually if so i want to make a note if the question was without this interval if the question was without this this is easy scenario okay that you may expect in the test so i want to i want to solve this problem in uh, two forms okay so i want to say this is part a okay i'm solving now the problem as you see it so the intersection is from minus two to one so the area right away as you see the problem it would be from minus two to one okay the the higher function the one that is above so you put your uh, inside you pee inside you look up the blue is above so the rule says you should put the one above g minus half okay so this is the rule for the area okay Okay. Now I give you a trick. There are many details. I give you a trick. Wait, so, but so, wait, right? but I don't understand why is the G a one? What is G one? You said you look up and then you yeah, yeah, that, that I want to give you a way to figure out. No problem. Okay, uh, so the idea is this: the the, the rule says you want to write. Uh, something before something after it matters for them okay now i'll give you a trick area always positive if you put this before or that be after okay now it matters but the answer should be positive when you put a wrong scenario a wrong position you will get your answer what negative okay so what do you do yeah. if you get your answer negative you just put a minus at the beginning and that's it you turn your answer positive okay so okay. this is what you do. You don't care which position it would be because this takes a little more time to figure out. So you don't worry about. So I would say don't worry, okay? Don't worry about G bigger or F or F bigger than G. This is, I mean, the mathematical, let's say, concept. Which one is higher? We say G more, like bigger or F bigger. Uh, to figure out sometimes it's hard if you don't if you don't graph it don't worry about this or that okay just just care for what you just care for just care for the area should be positive if your area is negative if area is if area equal a minus just what you do is turn it positive you go back, you put a minus for the integral, and that's it. You fix your will it, and will it get us, it will give us the same answer. Yeah, for sure. Same put... answer, yeah. It's same answer. It's only the sign, but you don't show the minus. Your answer, if it is minus, would be wrong. Okay. If your answer is minus, you leave it, it's wrong. They don't consider it's correct, but you should mark it as positive. Anyhow, so now this is hundred percent right. Okay, how do you proceed? You put the G, you put F. So let me continue. Okay. So the area in this question would be integral from minus two to one, g minus f. So what is a g? You go up four minus two x minus f minus uh, two x squared, right? Okay. Yeah. Okay. And then you integrate as usual, and you proceed. Your answer would be uh, proper. So that you continue. If you do, you want me to continue, or is it okay? Can you continue? Okay, how do you continue? You integrate. So integral of this would be, integral of that would be two x, you add the one divided by. Here you add the one, you get three and three. That's it. You put from minus two to one. No need for plus C, you can, but no need. Okay, and then you plug in numbers. So you put a one in every x. So if you put a one, this would cancel by the way. So you get a four minus one minus two thirds, okay, minus. 
Now plug in a minus two in every x, so you get four bracket minus two, minus minus two square, minus two over three, minus two cubed. That's it, okay? Now use calculator, you, you get your answer. Any question? No. It should be what? It should be positive number. If let's say you get negative, you turn it positive and you put a minus there as before, but that is- So it doesn't matter if it's minus two up or one up, it, we just... Yeah, it doesn't matter. It, uh, okay, you mean if you get, let's say, minus half or one over minus two? Is your question? No, no, no. What do you so mean? I'm saying half? it doesn't matter if the minus two is on top of the integral or if the one is on top. No, no, here? Yeah. Here it matters, yeah. No, here, uh, always from small to big. The area or the integration always from small number to big number. This is the design of always, small to big. You, don't, you cannot put it uh, different, okay? If that is your question, the numbers should be in order. So whatever you get right here, you put them lower number, higher number up. Okay, okay. now we didn't answer the question by the way. So this is one of the questions that you have. Now the original question was, let me copy it again. Okay. So this was the original question, which is what you may have in a different test. Let's say. So sometimes we have it without. So we did the problem without this. Now, what happens if you if you have that uh, interval? This is given interval, specified interval. This is a given interval over a given interval. You want to find the area over given interval. Now, how do you work it out? Step one, still the same, okay? We do step one. Now, step one is the same. We got x equal minus two, x equal one, is it? Yeah. Okay. Now, you look, uh, you look at the interval given. Step two, you cannot find the area right away. You look at, you check your interval. Check the given interval now. Check the given interval. So, I mean, you go up here. It says from minus two to two. Now your uh, boundaries or your intersection is from minus two to one. What does it mean? So if you go on the number line, what do you notice? You have minus two in order, okay? You have the one and you have the two in order, okay? You put them in order. So you wanna go from um, minus two to two, but the one is uh, included. So what do you notice? This means you have two parts that you want to take. So that makes area one. That makes area number two. So the total area that they are talking about is their addition. So that's what you want to write. Total area equal A1 plus two. Okay. Now A1 is what? A1 is from minus two to one. Now what is A2? A2 is from one to two, but it's not for the same function. Be careful. It should be uh, either G minus F or F minus G. Now, this is the trick. If you go up, if you go up to the uh, little graph, so this is minus two to two. Well, this is one. Where's the two? X equals two. Let's say X equals two is somewhere here. Uh, okay, where's X equals two? Let's see here. So this is graphically what's going on, okay? You are uh, calculating, this is A1, exactly, from minus two to one, okay? A2 is from one to two, so this is a second area, okay? From the graph, you notice that the blue, I mean, you come, you come, so that was your question, how do I figure out? There are two ways. If you come from the top, come from the top, which one you touch is the first function you write. So this is called G, okay? So this is G, that is F, the green is F, okay? So this means G minus F right here, and that means F minus G is there. That would guarantee to have your answer positive. Again, you can work it out the same uh, whatever, but you change it to positive. So this is G minus F at the beginning, so A1 would be G minus F, and that would be F minus G. Okay. Can you explain again? Now, again, if that you didn't get, 
if that you don't understand, always you want to put either g minus f or f minus g. Again, you look right here. If it is a minus, you go back, you change it to positive. That's it. Same scenario as before. So if you don't get what to write in, okay, one of those would be uh, opposite. Those would be okay. opposite when you have two areas and you have okay. two functions. You cannot put the same. You cannot make f minus g in each. It doesn't make sense. A1, A2 cannot be that look. Cannot be the same. But it's one always going to be would one be of reversed. Them. Okay. But you but don't know which one gives you positive, which one gives you negative, let's say. So you put whatever, you work it out. If you get here a minus, change it, you come back, put a minus. But it will always be something minus something, right? Not plus or something or anything like that. It will always be either F minus G or G minus F. Yeah. Okay. Yep. That's it. Yeah. Always when you have two areas, this is the scenario when you have to a, a1 and a2. So this cannot be the same, let's say. You cannot put the same. One of them would be let like, uh, f minus f minus g and g minus f. But you don't know which one goes. Let's say you don't know. Now I know. How do I know? I go up to the graph, I can see it. So uh, if I want to graph it fast, so that was the scenario. And that was the line going up on. So there were there were region here, there were another region there. For me, how do I get it fast? I come up. Now that was called the G, and this was called F. You see, I touch a G first. So this is G minus F, and that for sure it would be F minus G the opposite. Why why F? Because if I come from the top, I see F. But that you should be able to graph it. This is the point. If you are unable to graph it, you cannot tell what's going on. So I'm giving you a way to not to worry because you won't have. You won't expect, I mean, you cannot expect what functions would be. Sometimes it's x cubed even. So mm. uh, it won't be easy sometimes to graph it. This is uh, one, one question in an exam. So y equal, let's say, x cubed. OK. And y equals, uh, so this is x cubed uh, function. OK. And y equal x. So I'm not going to graph it now. Y equal X cube, Y equal X. The question is to find the area bound. That's it, okay? Now, did they specify an interval? No. Bounded. Okay? Now, there is no interval uh, specified. Didn't say over something. So you do step one. So that you can call it y1, y2, you can call this f and g. I don't I don't care. So this is x cubed equal x. Now if you want to solve collect, take x comma. So what do I get? I get here x equals how much? Zero. What do I get in this? I get x squared equal one. So how much is x? Plus or minus one. Plus or minus one. So how many answers do we get? Three answers. Three. You put them in order. Put them in order because you wanna. It's not only two answers. When you have two answers, it's okay. No worry. But you have three answers here. So if you put in order, order. Okay. I have the minus one. I have the zero. I have the one. Now this is not given an interval. Not given an interval. But I have three numbers. So it's as if there's an interval. You see, this is a very tricky question. So that the problem admits again two areas. Okay, so A1, A2, that happens when you have three numbers, it means you have two areas. And in order, this is the way you wanna write it. Again, which one comes first, which one comes second, you don't know. Let's say I wanna work it out uh, as it is. Okay, so A1 would be from minus one to zero. Okay. A2 would be from zero to one. So what do you wanna write here? This is the question, uh, no need to sketch. If you are unable to sketch, let's say you are unable to sketch to tell which one comes first, okay? So how do you work it out? What do you wanna put in? Put whatever you want. So you go back, what do you wanna put? You wanna put either this before or that after, okay? okay. So let's say you put it whatever, okay? Let's say we put it this way. Let's work it out. If you get it negative, I'll manage, I'll make it correct later. So if you integrate, you get one over four. If you integrate the X, you get half square, from minus one to zero. 
Now put a zero for all, minus, put a minus one. If you put a minus one, use calculator, you get one over four minus one half. Now use calculator, how much is this answer? You get um. one over four. So it is positive. It is positive, which is okay. So it means you don't change the form, but be careful if that comes first in this area, that cannot be again first. So you wanna flip it. So you change the order here, change, change order of functions, okay? Change order in A2. So A2 in this case would be from zero to one, X minus plus root. It, we said it cannot be the same in both. Does it make sense? Okay. So if you integrate, you are sure that you will get it positive. So let's see, half minus uh, this from zero to one. Now put a one, you get half minus one over four. Okay, and then when you put the zero, you get big zero. Okay, so half minus one over four is one over four positive already. So this is fine. Again, imagine that you did this by mistake. So if, if that is a minus, you come back right here, you put a minus, you turn this to plus. Okay. Are they if, meant to always be the same answer? Uh, not necessarily, no. It's those those are very special problems. No, not necessarily the same. Okay. It happened here to be the same because we have uh, special special scenarios are going on. Okay. Those are okay. special functions. Okay. No, not not necessarily the same. You may have here, let's say, a two here, like a three or whatever. Okay. Perfect. Okay, okay, now we are not done. The total area is their addition. You say total area is A1 plus A2, and in this case, you get yeah. Okay, find Gini index or, or f of x equals x to the power 2 thirds. That's it, okay? So you notice that you have many uh, different forms of gene index questions. Some touch uh, understanding, background about concept. Some touches uh, yeah, finding a certain value, uh, applying gene index. So this is the very basic question I would start by. Find gene index for a given function. So you would say the formula is gene index equal. Gene index is a value. So it is twice integral from zero to one always. Okay, uh, what do you write here is, uh, what do you write in Gini index? I don't know. One minus f of x, x minus f of x, yes. Okay, let me, let me check uh, the formula for, for a second. Because we, uh... So what do you do is you replace and you integrate and that's it. So Gini index, by the way, is uh, this, this is the background. If you want to understand why is it X. So always you take, this is your X. Let's say this is your function somewhere here. Okay. So, so this is x, that is f of x. So what you are talking about is the area again, but we call it Gini index. And it's always from zero to one. That's it. Okay, so this is the concept of Gini index. Now you should understand that Gini index is a value always decimal between zero to one. Uh, it's, uh, wh why do we use it? Because questions come on the concept, so you should know that this is an indication of uh, of wealth if it is equally distributed among population or not equally distributed. That's it. Okay. So if the value of Gini index is closer to zero, is good um, indication. If it is closer to one, we say it is not good. Okay. So have you taken this before or not in economics? Okay, equally distribution among population or not equally distribution. Uh, what is that it is equal distributed? It's like the wealth, let's say money, whatever, capital, uh, well, whatever product, if they can measure if it is distributed uh, in a proper way or not. So Gini index, you wanna write Gini index closer to zero. Now, what do you mean closer to zero? This is, you wanna understand. Gini index closer to zero, it means a good indication. It means 
uh, equal distribution among population, equal distribution of what of the of whatever the application is wealth product blah 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 okay Gini index closer to one is not not equal distribution not equally distributed okay now how do you know if it is closer to zero or one so for example 0 0.4 0 0.5 0 0.6 so if a Gini index if 0 0.4 what do you say if a gi is this what do you say if it is 0 0.5, what do you say? If 0 0.6. So 0. Point, how do you know? Uh, the middle in between 0 to 1 is 0 0.5. So less than 0 0.5 would be closer to 0. That's what we mean, okay? Closer to 0 is any number which is less than 0 0.5. Closer to 1, any number bigger than 0 0.5. 0 0.5. If it is equal 0 0.5, so we say we cannot tell, okay? But usually, some would uh, take the um, take the advantage that if it is zero point five, it means towards then. But we cannot tell. We cannot tell. So this is a question mark. Zero point four, not equal distributed, or what? It is good, equal distributed. As it has become less, it means good, not equal distributed. Is it fine? Perfect. Uh, if it is equal to zero, highly equal distributed. Equal to one, highly not equal distributed. Okay, because this is the maximum or the minimum that it can reach. Anyhow, so this is the formula. If you want to do the calculation, you say integral x minus x power two third. You integrate, and then you replace from zero to one. So twice. If you integrate this, you get, integrate that, you get add a one. So 5 over 3, and then 3 over 5, from 0 to 1. When you plug in a 1, easy by the way, when you plug in a 1, you get the numbers only. So it's 2 bracket, half, minus 3 over 5, plug a 0, no answer. Okay, how much is this on calculator? Put all that on your calculator, how much do you get? Yep, you have calculator or no? Yes. You have calculator. Oh, sorry, I was un I was uh, muted by accident. But yeah. uh, check on calculator. Yeah. How much? So use calculator. What do you get? For t for two half minus three over five. Yeah, yeah. How much is this all? It's minus one over five. Uh, okay, so in decimal, it's my 0 0.2, you mean? Yeah. Mom, there's no minus. It cannot be minus. It cannot be minus. Uh, let me see. 5 and the 6. So x minus f of x, x power 2, 4. So the function I gave you then is not, I gave you the function on my own. It should be x power 3 over 2 now. Not so, so this is x power 3 over 2. Yeah. I'm fixed because that I gave you on my own. Okay. So this is 5 over 2, 2 over 5. Okay. Now this is fine. Okay. Now you get it positive. Half minus 2 over 5. Yeah. So I want to give you a function that makes it positive. Okay. Now it is positive. How much is it? Um. One second. So it's 0 0.2 now. Yeah. Okay, so 0 0.2, we say closer to zero. So 0 0.2 is closer to zero. Zero, then this indicates indication of an equal distribution, an equally distribution uh, of a product or for example, wealth, it depends. So they specify, if they don't specify, you can say of, of the wealth or product, okay, among population. Population means certain, let's say nation, uh, we don't know, okay, geographical, uh, whatever uh, they specify. So this is a way to indicate um, the equal distribution or not. Okay. This is the first type of questions. Is it okay? Good. Yeah. So you understood what does it mean? 
you understood uh, the formula, how do you calculate? And they give you the value of the genetic type. So it's like working it um, same way, but they hide something, give you something else, okay? Now I gave you the function, okay. I said find gene index. Now they give you gene index and they ask you to find the function. You still work it the same way, so find A. So let us see, you say apply gene index formula, apply gene index rule. So you say gene index, which is 0 0.268, right? Well, twice integral from zero to one, x minus x, so x minus the function, you put it on. Good. Now integrate. Now, even you don't know A, but you can still work it out. Integral is, you get, integral, you add a one, you divide by. Okay, that's it. So I'm done the integral finish from zero to one. Now, if you plug in a one, what do you get? Plug in a one, you get twice, half. Now, what is one square? I won't write it. So one square is a one. So I won't write, okay? So times one. Okay, now one to a power a plus one is how much? If you put uh, this one, how much is one to? So you don't know a, okay? But a is what? Is a number. Now one to any power, one to any power. If it is a zero or negative or positive, is a one. That's it. So this is again one over a plus one. But a plus one we don't know. Okay. Now when you plug in a zero in x, you get big zero, so that you neglect. There's nothing there. Okay. So what do I have on the left side? Zero point. Okay, now right here, you can multiply the two in. Two times half is a one, minus two over a plus one. So for that reason, they ask you to find a. Now you wanna find a, so solve for it. A is like uh, unknown. A is like an X, you wanna figure out how much is it. So that's it, go ahead, solve for a. How do you solve for a? You have many ways. You can isolate. Uh, you can you can kick the one to the other side. Cross multiply. You can do many other uh, techniques. So calculate how much is this minus one? Point seven three two. Okay, so point. Uh, so you get it in the negative, huh? Point two six eight yeah. minus one. Point mm -hmm. seven three two. Okay, now here I have minus two over. Okay, how do you proceed next? There are many ways. Some would say I want to cross multiply. Okay, if you cross multiply, but I, but don't uh, distribute because it would be takes longer. I mean, it's up to you. But for me, I want I want distribute. I keep it this way. Hmm? I would divide by my zero point seven three two. Why? Because I need a a how much? Now I'm calculating a plus one. So this is a plus one equal. How much is minus two over? Minus two over. So minus minus cancels. We get two over. Now this is, and I mean it's not nice to write, and you don't count for sure. So how much in fraction? I prefer work it in fraction. Five hundred over one eight three. You cannot write the whole decimal, and you cannot uh, round. No rounding. Okay, you cannot round. It won't be correct answer if you round. Now kick the one, and you get your final look. So it would be this minus one. And the answer is 317 over 183. Okay, now you can find it as a decimal, go ahead. It is 1.7, blah, 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 but you can round now to two places. It's 1.7, you say 1.732, round it to two places. It makes sense? Uh, yeah. Or, or 1.732, round it to three places. I, I mean, I cut it at three decimals. Let's say round it to three decimal places. Now here they didn't specify how many. Okay, but usually you can round to two places by default. Okay, the question: Did they specify? No. Sometimes they say find a two three decimal places to two decimal, but usually I mean it's up to you to decide. If not, you can work it on two decimal. For me, I did it on three decimal. Okay. Any question? Good? Yeah, good. Okay, so uh, this is a graph with a two point, x, x to the power two point. So again, the same thing, gene index equals gi equals 
and applies integral of x minus f of x, the x will be the base n from 0 to 1. Okay, integrate, find the answer, go ahead. Okay. Um, so it's gonna be x2 over 2. So, yeah, you add a 1, you get 3.3 .3 over 3.3. .3. Okay, and then 2, you keep it from 0 to 1. Okay, now when you replace a 1, easy, because 1 to any power is a 1. So if you replace a 1, you get half minus 1 over 3.3. .3. And when you put the 0, is a big 0. Now, no need to write, but I'm just saying what happens to the 0. Okay. Now, calculator, and that's it. So this is calculator. You can put it the way it is, 2 bracket, 1 over 2 minus 1 over 3.3. And it would be... It should be always positive and a decimal number, okay? 0 0.3, now you can round to two places, 0 0.39. You say rounded to two places, 0 0.39, rounded to two places, rounded to two decimal places. 0 0.39 closer to zero, yeah, so therefore 0 0.39 less than 0 0.5, you say it is closer to zero. This yeah. means the index in the index closer to zero we say this is good indication it means uh, it means an indication of i mean you paraphrase it the way you like but that's what is in the book uh, usually or teachers it's all right uh, it's an indication of an equal distribution uh, what you distribute of what they didn't mention so usually of wealth or product okay an indication of an equal distribution of wealth or product, okay, among what? Among populations. So here they are studying uh, population like nations, okay, countries, uh, continents even, okay, uh, right. among population. Uh, what population, we don't know. I mean, this is in econ that you take much more, but in math, we are just touching uh, these concepts and calculations. Okay. Okay, so. Someone wrote the answers here. We'll, we'll see if it is wrong. So this is the formula for Gini index that we said. And, um, and it is clear in the question that they put, we know that X equal a function in P because the formula has to do with the FP. So FP is given, this is given, 7,000 minus 500 P. So how much is your derivative? Now here P is like an X, so this is a zero. Okay, the answer would be minus 500. Now, if you put the formula, you say E equals minus P times F prime over F. So literally, you put F prime how much? And you put how much is your F at the bottom? 7,000 minus 500 P. Okay? That's it. If you do a little calculation, I mean, minus times minus is a plus. So this is 500 P over 7 minus 500 P. Now, you can leave it that way. Some would go on simplifying more than numbers, but no need. So here... What they did is like they divided by 500, but no need. If you divide by 500 up and down, you will get those numbers, but no need, okay? Now, uh, the question is not only, there's no question about elasticity, by the way. They say if the current price increase, what happened to the revenue? Now, that that is an indication of elasticity. For that reason, we are applying elasticity. That you should know that you want to use this formula. Well, when it has to do with the price and one the given is like x equal it's an indication that you want to use elasticity mm -hmm. now when they say current price increases uh, what happens to the revenue uh, at at four dollars because the price is given to four so we say elasticity as four you want to figure out what happens at four so you put a four dollars instead of the price Use calculator, how much would be? It would be... How much would be? So 5,000, uh, 500 times uh, 4 divided by 7,000 minus 500 times 4. Yeah. How much? 2 over 5. Yeah, and that's the amount I need, 0 0.4. We say 0.4 less than one. So this is 
inelastic. Okay, that we studied. Elastic when it's bigger than one. So you say inelastic. Now you, because the question has to do with the revenue, we, we uh, studied a relation in between revenue and the price. We studied that graph. We say this is R, that is P, okay? Uh, and we split, we say this is the region for E less, this is for E bigger. Because in elastic, now you are working here. So you go back to the question, the price is what, increase or decrease? The price is increased. So when the price increase, where are you working? You are working in the blue part. So as price increase, we say, as price increase, what happens to the revenue? It follows, okay? So the revenue increase. Okay, because it is inelastic in this in this scenario. As price increase, you are going that if, if they say price decrease, then the revenue decrease, moving backward. Okay, that's it. So okay, the revenue would increase, and that's it. You cannot tell uh, anything more. Oh, any question? No. If they say the price increase by 10%, what happens to the revenue? If they say the price increased by 10%, because sometimes they give you percentage. So if price increase, let's say by 10%, then what happens to the revenue is like, uh, you multiply the 10% by elasticity, you can tell. So it implies a revenue increases by E times the 10%. So how much was your uh, elasticity? It was 0 0.4. So this would be 0 0.4 times 10%. Now keep the percentage, multiply 10 by 0 0.4, you get four, so 4%. It means revenue increases by 4%. So this is how you calculate. You multiply, okay. so what is the elasticity for? Uh, it has two uh, roles. Elasticity tells you what happens to the revenue and it tells you by what percentage that happened now they didn't give in the problem a percentage this is extra question extra so sometimes they say sometimes they don't you have a problem when they say a percentage if price increased by 10 percent so all you have to do take the percentage multiply by elasticity this is e times okay so I, I put the multiplication, I got 10 times this four, but I keep percent because I wanna the answer in percentage. 